Hello and welcome to our webinar Wednesday recap. Each week here at Dotto Tech, we host a live tutorial webinar on a productivity or social marketing topic. And this video is a recap, a highlight reel of the top 10 minutes of actionable items from this week's webinar, which was hosted by Phyllis Care. Phyllis taught us how to rock a calendar-based life. Steve Dotto here, how the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. And this week on our Webinar Wednesday recap, I'm thrilled to bring onto the show Phyllis Kerr. Now, Phyllis had an amazing challenge in her past. She had to finish a 300-page book in 30 days. And to do so, she had to develop some mad productivity chops and develop a system that allowed her to recapture time from seemingly nowhere. She did so by building a calendar-based system, by using the calendar at the heart of her productivity system, and it was so efficient that she now teaches it to others, and she generously came on to our webinar Wednesday and taught us some of the techniques towards leading a calendar-based life. There's some really good insight here for personal productivity. Now, this video is a 10-minute recap of a webinar that actually was almost an hour and a half long. If you want to join us for any of our future webinars, I suggest you take a look Look in the description below and find a registration link and join us. But for now, sit back, relax, and learn how to become wickedly productive by rocking a calendar-based life with Phyllis Care. So let's just get started. So I want to reduce your overwhelm and increase your productivity. And I have a few very simple steps that can help you in that journey to live a calendar-based life. Google me. I like being Googled and there's a lot I've been doing since 2010 and even before that way back in the 80s and 90s because I'm that old. I want to express my understanding of how it is to feel overwhelmed. But if you are having any of these particular problems, then you definitely have some time management issues. If you don't feel any momentum in your personal or professional life, then you really truly, you know this, you need time management skills. But also if your pay ratio is off for the amount of time that you're taking to do something, for the amount that you're being paid, if it doesn't really add up, then you need better time management. Because if you can learn to manage your time better, you'll be able to get these things done quicker and therefore give yourself a raise. But most people have a big disconnect when it comes to managing their time, that they don't quite have their feet on the ground when it comes to time. They think that time is something magical and that something extraordinary is going to happen, that they can fit everything on their to-do list in in a day. So let's talk about this. The one thing I need you to do as we go forward with these, these new rules to time management that I've developed is that nothing changes unless you decide to change. Nothing will change unless you're willing to try some of the things I'm going to suggest today. So most people will say, you know, sh uh, you know, I'm sure it's not as simple as just using my calendar, but I'm here to tell you it really is. It's really that simple. So living a calendar-based life is simple and easy to implement, but you need to be willing to try. Okay, so let's get started. These are my six easy rules to change your life and learn to live a calendar-based life. Rule number one, put everything on the calendar. Rule number two, no overlapping. Rule number three, Use only time blocks or individual events, and we'll talk about all of these in a deeper way in just a moment. But this rule number three is about how your brain works, and so we'll get into that in just a moment. Rule number four, set a reminder for everything, everything. Sync your devices is rule number five, and rule number six is always do a weekly review and preview. This one rule, this one change, when I started doing this consistently every week, made me so much more productive just immediately, just by following this one rule. So let's get into each of these and see what they're all about. Rule number one, put everything on the calendar. I really and truly mean everything. 
you know, a lot of people think, well, I'll put my dentist appointment or I'll put my phone call that I have to do at a certain time on the calendar. But you really need to put everything on the calendar. And if you have clients, maybe your clients need to have their own calendar layer. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of Google Calendar 101 in this webinar, but each client that you have can have their own own layer calendar that you can show or not show inside a Google Calendar. So you have to put everything on a calendar. I have a house calendar. I have a client calendar. I have a um, regular Phyllis life calendar. I have connections to my husband's calendar and my son's calendar. So I have all these different layers that I can turn on or turn off to see what's going on. But if you're not used to putting things on your calendar, take the first week and just use your calendar as a journal. So on Monday, you did this for a certain amount of time, and then you had lunch, and then you did this for another certain amount of time. No matter what you did, put it on the calendar like a journal. And you'll start to find that your calendar will be showing you stuff that you probably are in denial about. For example, you might find that what you're doing during your day is not contributing to your business. And it'll be very clear if you use, if you're, if you're willing to try this, to put everything that you do on the calendar. We'll go into more about that in just a minute. But how do you put it on the calendar? Well, there's two big spaces to put what you do in a space on the calendar. The first one is the title and the other is the description. So depending on what it is that you're doing, you can use the title to put everything that you've done and or you can put everything that you've done inside the description area. For example, this one says pre-launch content creation. And inside the description area, I've put find and source the images, create the images, do the keyword research, write the draft. And as you're putting this on your calendar, be generous with your time. Again, if you're using it as a journal this first week, then you just put the exact time it took you to do these things. But if you're planning for the future, be generous with your time, especially in the beginning, because most people don't realize how long it takes to do things. Rule number two, no overlapping for less stress. So what this means is, like I said, if I have all these different calendars and I turn them all on, then anything that's overlapping is mentally stressful, emotionally stressful, and physically in your time stressful. So if you turn them on and you are in some way responsible for the things on those calendars, you can't have things overlap. Just looking at this image underneath this red X just gets me stressed. So we want to make sure that things look more like this, okay? This is what we want. Plenty of room between things and lots of space to do the things that we need to do. Rule number three. This is where you have to understand how your particular brain works. Either you're the kind of person who likes to sit down and do a project and just do it till it's done, which means if you have a video or a podcast or a, a blog or something that you're creating, then that might take you all day long. Because remember, it's not just creating it, it's also doing the marketing and scheduling and doing all the things that need to be done. So if your brain works like some people, they just like one day, Monday, they only focus on a blog post and that's just all that they do all day long. Good for them. I'm not that person. <laughs> I'm the kind of person who needs to break up the tasks and do them at different times. So inside of the task of creating a blog post, there's a bunch of different things, but maybe there are five moving parts to creating a blog post. The writing, sourcing the images, getting the keywords, doing the editing, um, putting it up as a draft, having somebody look at it, scheduling it, and then the marketing aspect. I actually take each one of those parts of the blogging process and put them as separate times on my calendar. And then that way, um, if something happens in my life, which sometimes it does, I can just easily move something to a different spot. Now, 
also realize that if you move things from day to day and keep moving them away from getting them done, this is where your calendar is talking to you. Your calendar is telling, screaming to you actually, hey, why are you avoiding this? Or, rule number four, setting a reminder for everything. I remember when I first got started, I had all my devices on and reminders set up for all of them. And so all five of the devices would it's, you know, do their little notification sounds all at the same time, 10 minutes before each new thing on my calendar. And I had to like change that after a while. <laughs> it was really like being in the, the clock maker shop. But really and truly setting reminders is good. Now you can adjust this for how it fits for you. And I have found that in my life, that 10 minute notification has been working great. But recently, I've also added a one minute notification um, because inside of those 10 minutes when I should be wrapping it up and moving to the next thing, sometimes I get even more deeply involved or distracted. So I need that one more minute reminder. And rule number five. Now this used to be a hard thing to do long ago and far away, and that was to sync your devices. But now it's really very easy to do, especially with Google Calendar with the one Google account. And so I wouldn't worry about that too much. But on the settings on your mobile device, you uh, need to check and make sure that all the calendar layers that you have on your desktop are also visible on mobile. So that's an extra step that you definitely need to do. Rule number six, always do a weekly review and preview. So like I said earlier, this particular step really changed my life. And that is to take a moment I tend to do it on a Sunday night and I review what happened during the week. Now, if anything didn't get done during the week, uh, my personal rule is if I put it on the calendar, that means it's important and it needs to get done. So I can't just delete it or ignore it or leave it into last week. I have to look at it and say, okay, I didn't do it. And so slide it over to a day this upcoming week to get it done. And that is just a few of the highlights of our webinar with Phyllis. I think we had over 600 people in the room. The chat was going like crazy. It was one of the, it was one of the, I think, most valuable Webinar Wednesdays that we've hosted. So a reminder, if you've not yet signed up for Webinar Wednesday, check out the description below, click on the link and find out what our next week's webinar is and please join us. You will find it to be tremendously valuable. I can promise you that. And while you're at it, how about subscribing to this channel? Every week we post productivity videos. We host our weekly webinars here. Dottotech's a great place to hang out. Check out some of our other videos if you've got time. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.